a gritty voice speaks on life on Toronto's streets. I'm here with Essie Thomas. How are you doing today? Not bad. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing great here in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, would you mind telling us your story really quickly? You're, I mean, this is so cool. You're on the streets selling your books. You have three or four of them out. Yeah, and that's all in three years. So <laughs> Three well, years, wow. Yeah, well, I started it. It was just see what happens, <laughs> and it actually turned into something. Well, it's such a cool story, though, because you're saying, like, you know, I sort of a blue-collar guy. I was doing carnival work or carny work on the off-season. I was driving all these guys around, all tussle and bustle. My girlfriend had a master's degree and convinced me to start writing that story. What's the process been like for you since like writing the first word to where you are right now? Well, now it's actually a walk in the park. The first book was actually took quite a long time, practically, because we didn't know what we were doing yet as writers, right? We didn't know our style, because you gotta find that. Yeah. So this one actually took a really long time to write. And then when we finally got it out, everybody took to it, loved it. That's the feedback I was getting, people were coming back. Like, Keep writing, don't stop. So I was like, what? And then I kept giving my girlfriend the feedback. And so, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right? As they say. So we just continued with that same style. We did another novel right away, Squeegee Kid. And everybody loved that one, just the same. I was like, Okay, so we know our style's good, we know we're good. So we ventured off and started our short stories series. Okay. With book one. And that was actually really easy. Really easy. After doing a novel, mm -hmm. the short story did nothing. Yeah. So, it, and uh, yeah, and then I had a guy in Toronto that he's a courier down there, he bought, bought it. He's like, he goes, that book is so good. He goes, I missed my bus stop. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he was right into the story. I was like, wow. So it's been a, a really cool adventure. But now that I got reviews and ratings, I got a website, all that, it's just it's starting to starting to work. The engine's starting to run on its own now. You know what I mean? I'm not like pushing it so much anymore. Now it's starting to, the, it's momentum, to you. the momentum's just keeping it keeping it going now and now I got people here like I said I come here and I got people that been, I've been looking for you I want that book yeah and it's just I don't know it's the craziest feeling going from drug addict carney to writer that's a, a that's a cool story though what a transformation <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> you know that's so cool well I really liked what you did is you hand me this uh, squeegee kid or you handed me crackleton here it's like hey just start reading it and that's so cool, you know, because you put the faith in me, you put the work in my hands, and you're like, here it is, are you interested? And I read like the first three paragraphs, and it's about, you know, this guy named Bruce, like I have a friend named Bruce, and you're driving him around, and it's like, that's so cool, I wonder what that story's about. You know what I mean? Okay. Alright, so with all the stories you've written, with all the people that you've met on the streets, what's the most like, what are the most interesting reactions you've gotten from other people when they read your work? I've had people come up to me that didn't even buy the book actually there was one in Toronto for instance he was some gangster looking type dude you know the gold the hat the whole the whole nine right but he's white <laughs> and he and he comes up to me he's like you're the guy who wrote this book yeah Crackleton I said yeah he goes I just had to come and meet you he's like I never sold this guy a book right but I did have him on Amazon at that time, so I didn't. But then he tells me, no, he goes, well, a, a friend of mine bought it, and he owns a vape lounge. And he has it sitting in his vape lounge. And he read it sitting in the vape lounge. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to come meet me. Mm -hmm. I've had people stop dead in their tracks. I was buy on bikes. Stop dead in their tracks. Oh, I've been looking everywhere for you. I've been looking everywhere for you. I've had a girl, one girl, Toronto Blue Jays. They were going to the Blue Jays game. They were teenage girls, probably like 19, maybe 20. Sure. And I guess after the Star article came out, mm -hmm. after my Star article came out, she bought it on Amazon. But she came down and met me, and she was like, couldn't even talk. She was like, you know how people are when they're starstruck? They're like, uh, uh, uh. She was like that. Her friend had to speak for her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I've had so many interesting life experiences. I've only met you for five minutes so far, but I'm really enjoying it. You know, you said from like being, you know, on drugs as a carny to now being an author. I like all these cool experiences. And st 
still on drugs. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> well, the but, <laughs> but but the nature's way nature's way of staying high, marijuana. You're right. Hey, it, it's uh, federally legal in Canada, right? Yeah, I said stand right here and smoke. Yeah, how many jobs can you go to where you can smoke right at your job? Well, I, I used to be a high school teacher, so not that one. Uh, you know what, though? I don't work for nobody. I work for me, so I decide where I'm going to smoke. Nice. <laughs> I make the rules. And that's why I, re I refuse publishing, too. <laughs> I refuse. That's one big reason. I have control. Yeah. I say what goes on. That's awesome. Nobody else. Well, that's my whole project. It's about us and other people. I'm looking for unique voices, and you're certainly one of those in a very beautiful way. So my question to you is, if we as all people... There they are. There's all the people. All the people. There they are, too. If we're to live together in universal brotherhood or unity, what do you think it is we have to do, and what's preventing us from doing it? Well, for one thing, my thought on that is that could never happen. People are too different. There's a lot of people in their own little bubbles, and they think they're all that. And too stubborn. It, would, it just wouldn't happen. Right. So there's nothing you can do to do it because it just wouldn't happen. You'd have to basically brainwash everybody simultaneously at the same time. <laughs> That's the only way it's possible. <laughs> do you think something like religion could do that? Like a brainwashing through any kind no, of religion? No, because you know what? I'm 100% atheist, and there's no turn. There's no converting me. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks so much. So, have you had any? But I do not diss anybody that you know has their beliefs. Everybody has their beliefs. Everybody has their thing, right? Yeah. You're gay. You're straight. You have religion. You don't. Right. That's up to you. And I don't hold it against you or him or her or the next guy because. Of so, uh, sir, if you have any advice for aspiring authors, what would it be? Never give up. And don't be scared. Don't be scared. There's other ways to do things without knocking on doors. Because you know what? I'm doing it this way, and they're coming knocking on my door. That's right. Well, S.E. Thomas, I'm so glad I came up to your doorstep. <laughs> All right, brother. Me too.